you have received a giant box which will come strapped on a pallet in an upright state. We have laid it down, bottom down there, top over here, so that we can show you how to remove the unit from the box. First thing, notice that one lid will slip off the top of the other base, so the top is going to come off. And then we're going to have some packing material. This is uh, just a security piece of uh, uh, cardboard. Strap to that or take to that on the instruction manual and the specifications on the unit. You can set that aside. The next thing you're going to run into is you're going to see the uh, stand, which is a removable stand. And the purpose of this is that you can remotely turn the unit on and off and also post outside the door when you're uh, disinfecting the room as well as it's a handle to push the unit around. So it's a multi-purpose unit. Also included on this is a dry erase board and that will allow you to write down notes as you're doing what rooms and your on-off switch, this is a remote on-off switch, and we'll go into that, uh, how to use it in just a moment. So I'm gonna set this aside. One note is that there are no bulbs packed inside the box. Originally, we were going to do that, but we decided not to, so uh, you're not gonna receive bulbs in the box, we're shipping them in a separate box. Uh, the next is we're going to have some packing material to remove. And this is like a sewer support section. I'm just going to remove it. Now we're getting to the point where we are uncovering the actual unit itself. And this is how it should look in the box. Power cord is going to be underneath everything um, in a uh, you know the cardboard uh, buffer. Basically, there's one at the bottom, one at the top. Again, we're, we're packing it and unpacking it, laying flat, but it's going to come shipped to you in an upright position. If you want to unpack it in an upright position, I think that's okay. It'll probably be easier to get out of the box. Um, since I've been handling these things, I can basically uh, get it in and out of the box with a fair amount of ease. So at this point, I'm ready to actually lift it out of the box. Some of the cardboard may fall as I'm lifting, but that's okay. And strategically, I'm going to place it on the floor, on the casters. There's the power cord. So there is the unit. Make sure that the casters are rolling freely. They should not be locked. But they, each caster has the ability to put a lock on them uh, so it doesn't roll. Now we're going to take the stand slash handle and I'm going to insert it into these uprights. The front legs, the long legs that are attached to the handle part what go down into the receivers that you can see I just slipped it in place then there is also a holder for the power cord it's a velcro strap so just strap the cord to that and you're basically ready to move this thing around and go wherever you need to go in order to do the disinfection the next step is going to be take bulbs and put bulbs in place. So the bulbs are going to be shipped in a separate box, as I said before. And they will come out of the sleeves. And I would take care, you know, to try not to touch the glass with your hands. You're going to insert the bulbs into the pin socket receivers, tombstones. There's a little black uh, piece inside the tombstone and that allows you to twist the light and engage it. 
So sometimes you have to kind of just gently finesse it in place uh, with those. So we're going to go ahead and load up all the bulbs. It's a pretty simple process. You just have to be careful. And I am touching the bulbs, but I'm going to wipe them off with a cloth before I ship the unit. You can hear that little click, which means it's getting past that little uh, plastic, black plastic piece in the tombstone. So this is going to go in there. There's going to be eight bulbs. I don't know if you're able to hear that click, but that click is happening as I'm just getting in and making sure it's secured into the tools. Uh, what you just heard was the bell on the timer and the purpose of that is to turn the machine on and off. When this, when you plug it in, this should be completely off and not ticking. And that way we know that we're starting with a uh, unit that's ready to be um, turned on. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. The instruction manual is likely that you should probably take it out and read it before you start doing all this. I think we're doing this video so that you can have something to refer to when you're taking the unit out of the box and uh, putting it together and installing the bulbs. When you clean the bulbs, you should clean it with a non or a lip free cloth and alcohol. See, I'm putting my fingerprints on the bulbs and they probably will need to go back and be cleaned. I will clean them before I repack re them. So now the unit is actually ready. And this is how the unit should be when you're storing it or moving it. And this is how you want to push the unit around. Taking care that you don't allow it to get top heavy and turn over. It's kind of hard to do, but it's not impossible. So you just have to be slow and methodical about moving the unit around and putting it where you want to. All right, so now we're ready to start the unit. We're going to put it in the middle part of a room. And so what we're going to do is take the power cord off of the stand, remove the stand, fold it open, and we're going to kind of take it near the doorway where we're going to want to operate the machine from. Um, has a sign on it so that warns people not to enter an on off switch. Uh, first thing I would do is I'm going to take the power cord, unwind it, and take it to an outlet. But before we plug the unit in, I'm going to take the remote switch and the remote outlet and make sure that they are working properly. So I'm going to put the remote switch into, or the remote outlet into the regular outlet. If this green light is on, that means there's power going to the unit. So I want that light off, and I'm going to turn it off with this remote switch that's on the light cart, or on the, um, whatever you want to call it. You can, so I'm going to move this out just a little more. Now I can plug this into the unit. Now just to make sure that the unit's not going to come on, if the timer is expired, should be on off, and you should not hear a ticking sound. That's good because what we have to do is we have to turn on the power, make sure that the emergency cutoff switch down here is illuminated before we turn this on. So the process to do that is now I'm going to go back to the wall unit. I can either turn it on here or turn it on with the remote switch. And I know that I've got power going to the unit. Now if the emergency shutoff is 
illuminated. I know that I've got power going to everywhere it needs to go to. Off, on. So we're at a position now where we can actually operate the machine. I'm gonna go back, turn off the wall outlet. There's no green light. I'm gonna to come to the unit. I'm gonna turn this to the desired amount of time. Let's say for right now, we're gonna go 25 minutes. You can hear it's ticking now. So that when I turn on that remote outlet, the unit is gonna power up, the bulbs are gonna come on. Immediately when the machine comes on, it's going to go through a reset cycle. The bulbs will illuminate, all of the relays in here will activate, and it'll take a 30 second time period for the thing to actually reset and come on for the extended amount of time that you want it to come on for. So if we go over to the doorway, you might want to come out here and get in the hall because it's going to come on naturally. You can hold it around the corner and um, see it. And just so you know, I mean, I'm telling you this, the two or three seconds that it's going to come on is not going to hurt you, but you want to avoid that if at all possible. So being outside the room, you're now able to turn this on. And I'm just going to, I'll step out here. So the warning signal is happening. That's going to happen for 30 seconds. The lights are off. If you notice the red lights on top on each side, that is an indication of which occupancy sensor has detected movement. As the machine resets, each one of those lights will go off. There's four, one for each side. And then the unit itself will reset. So we're just going to wait 30 seconds for it to come back on. So it is now in full operation. If it detects movement, I walk in the room, it detected me and it turned off. So now we've got a 30 second period for it to reset. We do have the ability to turn off the alarm and go to a yellow light. I think most people are going to want to have the alarm just in case that they know that uh, uh, somebody's gone in the room where it's been on. You're not in danger now. You're only, um, it's reset. That's the whole purpose of the whole occupancy sensor so that if it detects movement, you can see that I've detected movement here. This one is not dangerous. But you can tell which one of these has picked up movement by the, the light that comes on up here, this light. So since we're doing a video, I'm going to leave this on yellow. But I recommend that when you get it, you leave it on red. I'm going to hopefully ship all of these with the red light on it. So now it's waiting for 30 seconds for no movement in the room. So we're going to come back out here. And wait another... 30 seconds until the thing resets and then it'll come back over again. So it is now on. It should be a green light on top. If I need to go in the room and turn it off ahead of time, I can use the remote switch to turn the unit off. But immediately when you turn the remote switch on right now, it's going to come back on because the timer has not expired. If the timer is expired, you have to reset the timer before it'll actually turn itself back on. So, now I can turn it on if I had to turn it off for any reason. 
it will come on and automatically go through the reset process. And in 30 seconds from now, it'll come back on and disinfect. What you want to do, if you are looking at this through a glass window or a glass door, you are safe. The UVC rays will not go through a glass door or a glass window or plastic for that matter. Uh, you just don't want to expose yourself to this for an extended period of time. The detection of movement should be very rapid and the unit should turn off immediately. If you open a door, it should detect that and turn off um, pretty fast. So the unit is now only and it is in there disinfecting. You can see the reflection of blue light um, coming off of the tubes. And the green light on top which shows you that everything is really operating normal. So now, let's say that the time has expired, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I can take this back in if I was keeping track of the room, so I was doing or whatever, I can do all that right here. I can take this back to the unit. I can unplug the unit from the wall. Wind the cord back up. I do have an additional little uh, Velcro strap to hold the cord together just for the sake of having something. You may not be picking me up clearly, but I'm sorry about that. I'm on my... Reinsert the legs into the machine. Reattach power cord. Now you're ready to transport to the next room and do your disinfection. Again, since we turned this off early, you can still hear that the timer is clicking. If the timer has expired, then you still want to go through the process initially of making sure that you've got power to the unit. And if this is not ticking and it turned itself off, you can feel, feel pretty comfortable that when you plug everything in, set your timer, go outside the room, then everything's going to work fine. I think you just maybe initially you just have to reconfirm that that is on the own position, which means it's illuminated. And uh, that is it. That's your portable disinfection tower in a nutshell. And uh, cleaning should be done, like I said, with uh, lint-free cloths and alcohol on the bulbs. Sometimes you'll notice that they'll get a little dusty. So alcohol, lint-free cloth to clean them. The rest of it is pretty basic. You don't want to use liquids. You can just wipe it off with, uh, usually I use a uh, microfiber cloth to clean it. And um, that's about all I can think of to tell you.